Well, hi, good morning. Thanks so much for joining me here in my shop. Me and my two cats, I'm sure they're going to present themselves shortly. So the first thing I want to do with the radio today is hook it up to a better loop antenna, my better loop antenna. Uh, I had had it running here for a while and I've been tuning around and it's not picking anything up. I thought we were picking up stations yesterday. But plus you can hear that popping sound that's the interference that's here in my house that I don't know what causes that. See it's slowing down a bit. What is that? So anyway, let's there we are. Ah, see it stopped? What is that? See, I think the sound is still in there. It's just gone from a tap, tap, tap to a ch, -ch, 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 -ch like that. Whatever it is, I don't know, and I've tried many times to find it, so. Okay, we're gonna hook up the loop antenna here. And we'll see what kind of reception we can get out of that. Okay, so the loop antenna is right behind you here. There it is. Okay, so the radio's on, and I think it was two. It's Lady News Time 920. All I want is you. Those are the words on the cover of Bay Brewer Radio's Inspiration Gift Guide, a 16 page homage to the wonderful world of sight and sound. So that gives an idea of what, what this radio can do with a proper antenna. Now, in the cabinet is a loop antenna designed for this radio. Probably the reception is going to be similar to what we're getting off that big loop I just hooked up. Great. makes us old is our inability to adapt. How do you like that? That's great. Okay, let's go on with the next step in the alignment process. I've got my uh, signal generator running here. It's all lined up. And the first step, disconnect the antenna. And we'll hook up the signal generator. This is going to be a matter of adjusting things at either end of the band and going back and forth a few times. And also, one of the steps involves the rocking process, which I have only now begun to understand after all these years. Oh my gosh, the things I admit to on video is just. But you know, I'm comfortable with the fact that I'm a human being. I accepted that quite some time ago. I didn't have to disconnect this. Life is easier when you uh, just accept the fact that uh, you're just, just a human being, just one of billions, stumbling along here. Oh, we hear it already. Oh, it's because we're dialed in at the IF frequency. Oh my gosh, what was that? <laughs> Some cat action in the room next to me there. I see two cats come running out of the room, so. Something got knocked over. Now. So last time I was doing some adjustments, I started adjusting the local oscillator and I started utilizing the adjustment that's way down here. There really is only four, let me turn this down, there really is only four adjustments left. This is a, let me get the numbers right here, just so I don't confuse myself down the road. Starting with a, so it's a five, a six, a seven, a eight. That's it. That should be easy to remember. So the first adjustment 
me just peek at it here. The first adjustment is uh, 1600 kilohertz A5. Okay, so oh, I gotta get this guy on too. So we'll dial up 1600 kilohertz here. Let me back this up a little bit. Not trying to advertise WD40, but have you heard of that product? <laughs> Probably have. 1600. Now we're not we're not adjusting the radio to achieve accuracy on the dial at this point. We're just trying to achieve the highest levels of uh, performance with it. I just keep rereading these because it's so easy to make a mistake. So I got to tune the radio to 1600. Again, I'm doing this with the radio not in the cabinet, so a little bit of guesswork here. And I'm going to. Part of my guesswork is that little marker on the front panel here. That little tiny mark. I'm going to assume that that's 1600 to do this. Okay, now watching the. We'll see what the radio is really. Okay, so it's a wee bit off. Not much. Maximum on the meter. Wow. Okay, you know what? We're right back to this wide, this thing being wide open again. Okay. I don't like that very much. A6. So the next one is tricky. We go to 580, which I'm going to assume is the other dot on the front panel here. Okay, that's over the dot. So we're assuming that's 580. We'll bring this down to 580 here. A strong, strong signal. How come it didn't get heard? Oh. Okay, so it's off. It's way off. That might explain why this one is is open so much. Just a whole group of them that relate to each other have been moved way off somewhere. So this is A6. I'm the one who moved A6 before. Rock variable and adjust for maximum output. So this is a tricky, a tricky process I've been thinking an awful lot about and I think I know why we do this and I think I know the best way to do it. This rock the thing. It's You can't just say rock it. I think there's a little more instructions required. So let's try it here. So I'm, I'm going to want to like this is way off in frequency. And this thing I'm adjusting is not an oscillator. Tune for maximum output. Well, maybe it is. A6. A6. Yeah, I'm going to spot this on this little diagram. We'll assume I'm doing an oscillator. A6. So there's a maximum right there. Make note of that. Just above the one. Now we rock the tuning. So I'm not going to rock it. I'm going to move it a little bit in one direction. And watch very carefully what happens to the pointer. Down. Okay, now we're going to move it.
move it up the other direction down okay so that doesn't mean anything that just means that with this where it is this has peaked it now I gotta move it one direction and try to make that go up by turning this just a little bit okay now the question is does it go up higher I wouldn't say so should be doing is adjusting the one that's most sensitive that's this and then the least sensitive one is the tuning and then rocking that to examine what happens go by steps here rock across each step here let's try that and actually up a little higher than it was checking the peak in each position of, uh, you can already see my hand turning this thing. that last jump. So I think the importance here is not is not so much getting a high reading on the meter or trying to get high sensitivity. You're, you're trying to bring three different variables in line by doing this. One of the variables you're not touching, the other two you're adjusting to try to find where it's like solving a simultaneous equation. So I'm not I'm not seeing much change from here now. So I got it up from uh, from just above the one, up about a division. And what that tells me is I'm just getting those three things. Oops, there's only two here. I need a third one. I'm getting those three things to line up. <laughs> okay, so I think that's a satisfactory effort. Except this has left this thing way up here. Let's just keep going through it. See what happens next. So you go back to 1600. Sixteen hundred. Does that say sixteen? Oh my gosh! I think it says fifteen. Whoops! I may have made a big boo boo here. No, it says sixteen. Oh, sixteen. Wow. Okay, lucky I looked at that carefully because uh, the next stage is done at fifteen, not sixteen. But. Uh, uh, <laughs> to put it back in the cabinet to do that you know what I, I could look at the uh, I could look at where the local oscillator is and deduce when this radio is tuned to 15 you know what I could have done that too with these marks I could do that right now in fact and check to make sure this mark really is what it says it is but, you know I forced the local oscillator to work here Let's go up to the other end. I'll try to find 1500. And we'll do it with the with the SDR here. So, okay, hold the fort here for a moment while I get all this working. That's a view out the front of my house today. 
Got a little bit of snow on the ground. We got some more coming uh, this evening. I believe we're going to get uh, maybe a foot foot of snow. But that's not what we want to look at. What we really want to look at is this. Okay, so this this tall peak here is the local oscillator. I'll verify it by just wiggling a little bit on the radio. There he is. Now, so we want the radio to be tuned to exactly 1500. 265 is the local oscillator. So add them together, you get 1765. Let me set the uh, radio. Uh, so this moves this red line to 1765. got to do is just tune the radio up to there. So I think I've tuned the radio to 1500 now. i turn it up a little bit. And I'll flip back here. Okay, so we're pretty sure this is, certainly via the local oscillator, this is tuned to 1500. The, uh, not on the dot, so the dot is not 1500. Let me tune the signal generator now to match it all. Ooh. Turn down the volume a little bit. So I think that's an image coming through there. So 455 twice is uh, just short of a, a thousand and we're shooting for 1500. That didn't add up at all, did it? 2,000. Thousand one point. Oh, that doesn't add up at all. Okay, ignore it all. Ignore it all. Ignore. Just ignore it, Jim. You're going to get yourself overloaded again. So there's 1,500. Oh, this is up pretty strong. That's pretty good. So the radio is definitely on 1500. So now we're ready to do this thing. 1500. I shouldn't say the radio is definitely. Yeah, it's definitely on 1500. 1500, Jim. Anyway, <laughs> was this whole thing going on here with the local oscillator? That's okay. If I do a little extra effort, that's no problem. A7. Okay, so tune the radio for maximum output and then adjust A7. Maximum. That would be it. A7. Double checking now to make sure I turn the right thing. As you get deeper into the alignment, mistakes are more and more, they result in more and more unnecessary effort. I'll make a mistake later on. He says. Getting ready to make a mistake here. A7. A7 for maximum. Watching the meter now. Wow. As ugly as this looks, I'm putting a big fat screwdriver in here. quite a difference. That really did. Now we're on to the last step along the way here. The last step is 1500 A8. So same frequency. Tune for maximum output. So I mean it should, 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 should darn well be on maximum right now. Okay. 
just do the last one. Now what should I do about this bent plate? I've already bent it in a distance. Uh, I've bent it in a distance, let's leave it for now. Okay, that was my finger touching it, here we go. Okay, something's not right here because absolutely no change on that meter. And if I crank it down pretty tight. What is going wrong here? Doing this at 1500. Meter A8 and A8. Adjustment A8 is for sure. So A8 is for sure pointing right at this. A8 out. You know what? Maybe this is related to the antenna and I don't have the antenna connected. So I'm scanning for A8. Is that A8? E2. It's right on the capacitor, so it's got to be one of these ganged ones. It could be this one up here. A7. A5, A6 are clearly part of the oscillator circuit. Where's A8? We've lost A8. There it is. Wait a minute. You know what? I, I cannot read this. I gotta look on the. Uh, let's look on here. So there's A8 very clearly pointing at this capacitor. And you can see clearly too, A6 is pointing at the screw in the hole in the chassis there. That's it. Yeah, I got it right. But where's A8 on the. Schematic A8. And here we go. A7. Actually, it's going to be part of this gained capacitor. A8. So there's A8. And where is it? Ooh. It's definitely, it's the front end tuning for sure. connect the chassis for loop operation and that's how that is connected but I don't have the loop antenna on it so my guess is this stage won't work until we have the radio back in the cabinet and connected properly to its antenna so we're not going to get maximum performance out of this radio until we do that and why wouldn't we do that now stick it in there can I stick it in and take it out and stick it in and take it out I want why if there's something more I need to do before I stick it in there. That's a good question. Is there something more for me to do here um, with it? So I've done the first through alignment. Once You know, when it's in the cabinet, I think it's tipped on an angle where this is all sticking out. So I can get out the whole top. I can do the whole alignment again in the cabinet. Let's put it in the cabinet. Yeah, that means I gotta clean up that cap. Okay, and as soon as I started on that course, I realized I forgot something. I still have that capacitor with the coil on it just hanging down there. Maybe that's what's causing this situation where I can't seem to tune here and get anywhere. So that component is way over here, and it's 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 part of it's part of I don't know what you know it's attached looks like it's attached to the heater line can't see how this would have any effect um, 
but time to experiment. So let's. I still have a part in here I haven't even soldered yet. Come to think of it. Let's flip it over and make a decision here about what to do. So this is the hanging open guy, and this is the stuck in temporary guy. Which I'm assuming this was actually made enough of a connection to to uh, to function properly. So this is a 0.05. I think I stuck in here. No, it's not. It's a uh, it's a 0.04. I don't sound very sure of myself, do I? Slightly smaller capacitor than what's in here. Or I can just leave this for now and continue. Put the whole radio back in the cabinet. Can't get at this after that. Tune the whole thing up. How am I going to decide if this is a good thing or a bad thing? The only way is to do some kind of experiment right now. I think the main experiment I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this away, throw it out, put that capacitor in permanent, and move on because I just I, 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 I because I read that in fact you can do that. These things don't improve the radio's performance that good. What I'll do is I'll remove it. I'll hang on to it. If somewhere down the road I suddenly realize, oh my gosh, something weird's happening with this radio, it's got to be this part, I'll still have it to put in. Well, that makes me feel good. That's good. That's good. Coming out now. You'll feel a pinch. Some areas around uh, Aurelia here to go uh, 50 miles in a couple directions and meet up with a lot of snow. Somehow Aurelia has escaped a lot of snow. But that may not last forever. this guy in the cabinet. And see if we really got somewhere. Certainly got somewhere. Okay, let's take a good look at the cabinet before I start going at it. So in the back we have this speaker grill which has come loose. A little grill here, lots of pieces of paper. So I'm getting ready to wash this out and, and literally I would soak this if I thought I could get away with it. But all these pieces of paper would be disrupted. Maybe even do something to the antenna here I don't want to have happen. So I think the... Uh, oh I never noticed these before. Look at that. So this is... What's that supposed to be? this. Is that access to something? Like uh, to a screw? Because it's just a... It's just a hole. A hole, a hole of three holes through here. What the... Well, they don't go anywhere. That's pretty weird. Okay, don't wonder about that a little bit. Uh, hinges are whew, pretty rusty down here. Someday these are just going to give right out, but not, not, not soon. Now what about these pieces are pretty tight? So one of the uh, detracting things here is is there's a little bit of cloth here on the slide on the 
slide that part here, this this cloth. What's that supposed to do? Is that just supposed to seal it up a bit? Is any of this missing? I don't think so. I think it's I think this entire piece is here. It just doesn't move as smoothly in the slot as you might as you might want it to. I've collected a lot of dirt in here. So probably the worst thing on this radio, really, and it's also kind of the best thing too, is this handle. This is clearly the original handle. And simply all the stitching is given out on the whole thing. Oh, it's almost ripped right through over here. I didn't notice that. Look at that. So this handle is going to give way. Uh, at least the top part's going to give way. The bottom part's tearing too. Oh my gosh. What this indicates is this radio had really got a lot of use. Uh, I think I mentioned that before. There's no question this was this was a well-used radio. So I could remove this whole piece and just remove it. Probably get at it up underneath here. Yeah. There's some screws up here. Just take those off. That'll release this these brass fittings and then out comes the leather strap. But again, this is a it's a major feature of this radio. Now I could probably replace it with something, but Whatever I did would never look right. So, can I make this strap look decent enough and be decent enough? You know what? The uh, screw connection holes here are coming right out. This is torn under here, I'm pretty sure. So, I, I, I could tighten this up, you know, shorten it up and uh, re drill holes in the leather and fix it back in tighter. Could do that. And I, I could restitch all this. Wow, wouldn't that be a an undertaking? Stitch this whole thing back up. This is a major part of this radio. The look of this radio. Everything else is really pretty good, really. I mean, what what more could you expect here out of this? In terms of look. So my plan then is going to be to release these, remove the strap, consider then what to do with the strap. I have some options with it that I can do. Uh, something anyway to strengthen it up here so it doesn't break off and have the radio drop. Exactly what that is, I don't know. Okay, let's see if we get the strap off. I, I usually, normally I would just leave stuff like this alone. But I think this is such an important feature here, this radio. The strap holding nuts over here anyway are loose. Come right off. Okay. They're loose over here too. Maybe I'm not the first one. Oh, here's one that's tight. Nope, it's loose too. Am I banging into it? Banging into the antenna here. I don't know what I'm going to find here. I might just be really just angling for trouble. Let's see if we can pop this off now. Here it comes. Well, it actually looks pretty good in there. Lots of green, uh, heavy corrosion, copper corrosion. Okay, so I think you can see what I'm going to be up to. So I'm going to go and be up to that. We'll see what I can make this look like next time around. Next time you see it. <laughs>